Well, hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee, and we are indoors today. Um, the greenhouse is good. <laughs> we're gonna plant potatoes. Well, we're gonna get our beds ready this afternoon, and then we're gonna do some planting between today and tomorrow. But this morning, we are gonna put this pantry to work for us. And we're gonna do, um, I've got kids, I've got grandkids, so I'm gonna make them like um, a chicken and veggie casserole with biscuits on top, kind of like a pot pie, but only with the biscuits instead. They love that. And then I've got to put together about eight different, um, I, I call them TV dinners, but they're, they're not. They're just um, make-ahead lunches. I'm going to make those for my daughter for her work week. So we're in here, and I know what I want to make, and I'm going to use as much on hand as I've got, which will be all of it, you know, definitely. But I've got these beautiful quarts of chicken and veggies. See how gorgeous that is? <laughs> We're going to use those. And I've got two of them in here. And that's all I've got left. These are wonderful. And I roasted. This chicken is roasted before I canned it with these veggies. It's going to be perfect. This is perfect for a pot pie filling. You know, thicken it up. Wonderful. We're going to do that. Okay. I had to fill up my... I had to dig into my root cellar because I was, you can see right up here. That's my container for my macaroni. I, it ran out. So I had to fill it up. This is what was left over in my 10 pound bag. So we're going to use some of this to make a homemade, um, just like a one pot macaroni and cheese. I'm going to do that for a side dish because I got my fried chicken in the freezer. We're going to give her one meal with fried chicken. Um, some macaroni and cheese and some veggies, a couple meals like that, that would be perfect. And then um, we're going to do the chicken and biscuits. Um, I'm also going to try and put together, well not try, I'm going to put together um, chicken tenders, homemade you know, chicken strips. And uh, with my, I'll show you everything I got on hand with my homemade shake and bake. It's wonderful. Instead of getting it deep fried, for those of you who like um, baked and, and versus fried, this is perfect. You can make beautiful chicken nuggets, chicken tenders with your homemade shake and bake. And if you don't have show, homemade shake and bake, you can buy it in a store. I got some of that on hand too. I buy um, right here. It's a seasoned coating chicken mix. It is an off-brand, but it works lovely. So I use that in a pinch, but when I have my homemade, my homemade is so much better. I Oh, I got that, and they had a new one that I want to show you. I've never used this one before. This is a barbecue that I picked up. I love barbecue chicken, and you can bake it that way. Nice. So I picked those up. And those have been in my pantry for since last fall, I think. I also want to show you a lovely friend sent me these. Look at how beautiful. She sent me an Easter present. And it's the um, whole grain brown rice. I love this stuff. Thank you so much. It's pre-cooked. I love it. And she gave me the, um, what is it? I don't got my Durham. Durham wheat, um, wrong side, Durham wheat elbow macaroni. Oh, thank you so much. What a lovely gift. I love pantry gifts. So I got those sitting over here because I'm going to use those. I'm excited for that. I'm not going to do any burritos or wraps. I might do some uh, cream cheese and ham, cream cheese and ham pinwheels because I think they would freeze okay. And if they don't freeze, those can be the first meals that she takes. She can just put those in her fridge because they'd last quite a few days in the fridge. And I got everything I need to make that. I love putting together the um, ham, scallion, and cream cheese roll-ups. Have you ever, anybody ever had those? Those are wonderful and they're beautiful in a little lunch, but you don't want to freeze them. 
you'd want to make them and store them in your fridge for, you know, uh, non-frozen lunch. Anyway, so I think... I don't think I need any more. I'm going to do the macaroni and cheese. I'm going to do this with the biscuit mix. And look at here, friends. I want to show you. This is literally making your pantry work for you. I'm going to use these for today. This is what I have in my pantry. Yes, I could make it homemade. But no, I'm not going to today. I've got the bis um, biscuit mix. All you got to do is add milk. How easy. So I can put these meals together quick and easy. Oh, God. Oh, look at here. Look at who's here, friends. Come here. Come here, baby. Take a look. Okay. Say hi. hi. Let me move this down. Friends, this is Cece and Gussie Boy. And he got his hair cut. All that long curly hair is gone. She said, oh, my baby boy, <laughs> no more curly hair. But we got them today, so we got to feed them too. All right, you showing them your truck? Mm -hmm. Say hi, friends. Hi, friends. Oh, he's talking, but he reminds me. Let me have that. Let me have that thing. He reminds me of Maggie. Her and him both remind me. Mr. Wayne is over here too. But they talk with this crazy Daddy. banky in their mouth, and it reminds me of Maggie from The Simpsons. Mm. That little girl that talks with that thing hi. in her mouth. Say hi. Hi, so <laughs> Here you go. You can have it back. <laughs> All right, friends. Let's head to the kitchen and get busy because I don't think I need anything else in here. All righty. Say so we'll see you in the kitchen. See you in the kitchen. There you go. <laughs> I come back in. Yeah. We're gonna do our. I'm not gonna. I know I got canned home. Um, canned. I have got canned cream of chicken soup downstairs, and I got some up here. But I'm gonna do mine homemade because I like it. I like that homemade, and then I can get it nice and thick, thicker than you know, than the canned. So that my casserole has some thickness in it. Um, that's it. I don't think I need anything else. Do we need to cook anything else? Yes. Yeah, what do we got to cook? I come in to get the flour. Oh, tuna fish? Maybe we'll make you some of that for a snack. Okay. Um, we should make a cake too. Yay! You want to make a cake? Yeah. You're going to dance for that one, huh? Let's see what we got back here because you know what? I've got, um, these are all chocolate. Should I do a chocolate cake? Yeah. I got box cake. Okay. We can make that taste homemade, sister. Yep. We're going to use those up. Yeah, we'll make a box cake because then we can freeze this. We can freeze this once we make this box cake, and um, we can send it in our lunches. It'd be really, it'd be like a real TV dinner. All right, are you standing in front of the heater? <laughs> are you cold, darling? Yeah. All right, friends. I think that really is it now for in here. And I just realized I have been going through. Let me put you on this side. I just discovered from all my uh, canned, let me put this up. Beans. When I was in here rooting around for what I can use for our little make ahead lunches, I, I thought this was chicken. This is turkey I canned. My chicken is gone. I made the, I canned roasted chicken and it's all gone. And I got to do more. Because I love the canned stuff. And you know what? I've got 222 pounds of beef coming tomorrow. And I, when we ordered it, I told them I didn't want any ground beef. I'll grind my own because we love to grind our own meat. You, you know what's in it. Not that I'm saying they, you know, put schmutz in it or anything. But I just like to do that. And then you can grind it to your own texture. So anyway, we're going to have about 40 to 50 pounds of trimmings to grind up tomorrow. 
So you're going to see my huge daddy grinder. I've got a huge uh, one and a half horsepower grinder that we got we bought from a friend of mine and it's a Cabela's. It's beautiful. Plus I got a big meat mixer. You could always uh, mix uh, for sausage. When I make sausage, you'll see that one. Or not sausage, but brats. Because we got the big meat mixer that'll mix about 50 pounds of meat at a time. So it'll mix it with all your spices. But anyway, we're going to have fun tomorrow because we're going to grind that meat up. We've got to go through the freezer, put everything in its place, and uh, we're going to make a lot of stuff out of that. That 222 pounds of meat is going to be wonderful. And I got it for $3.50 a pound hanging weight. And that includes the processing and then to deliver it to us. So that's fantastic. So anyway, with that, I'll have a lot of beef. But I do need to can more chicken. And, you know, you can can raw chicken. And I don't even have any chicken left. They call it ugly chicken because it just, it looks funky, you know, when you, it gets, the inside gets all white in the jar and splotchy, but, um, that's okay to do, but my family loves the roasted canned chicken. So I always roast mine first and it doesn't get stringy. It's wonderful. So anyway, let's head to the kitchen. I am all done in here. Um. Now I might have to come here for some spices or whatnots, but little Miss CC. Oh, I got to spend the whole day today with them. We're going to have so much fun. They're going to go outside. Papa bought them a bubble machine so they can blow bubbles outside. And they're going to help us plant potatoes. So you'll see them again. Okay, we had to pull these out. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to give them a freshen up because they were in my cabinet. So, we're going to get these dried off, yeah. get them set aside, and uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is the cake, and we're going to get that done because Yay, I can cake. whip that in the freezer, and then it can uh, harden up, and then I can put it in her TV dinners. <laughs> Are you guys having fun? I got these through Walmart if anybody is interested in these. These are wonderful. And they can put them right in the microwave. They're nice to have. You just gotta freshen them up because they've been sitting in my cupboard for quite a few months now. I haven't done this for her in a while because she's just been taking her own stuff. Yeah. So I got yeah. these and I think I got like 15 or 20 of them. And they're pretty durable. I like them. They go, I wouldn't put them in the dishwasher, but they can go in the microwave. So, all right. And what's nice about putting these together is my uh, veggies in here. Oh, I'm gonna do mashed potatoes too. I got my, I'm working on my last bag of potatoes from my root cellar. And they're just now starting to sprout. So those, that was wonderful. I am definitely going to grow. I got a 10 pound bag of those russets again to grow this year. Oh my goodness, you two. What are you doing? You can't see their heads bobbing up and down. <laughs> this is Nana's kitchen. Anyway, I'm going to make some mashed potatoes. But the rest of it, I don't have to thaw out the fried chicken. I don't have to thaw out the veggies. I can just package these up and send them right on home with her. Plus, I'm doing this not only just to give her some lunches, you know, spoil your kids, but I'm making more room in my freezer. So I'm getting these put together today. And you'll see my freezers. I got all kinds of meals in my upright freezer, and I'm just so excited for that beef to come in. That is going to be so nice. Okay. Oh, wrong way. So, we're going to do this. I'm going to do a sheet cake, a half sheet cake. And that can take about a couple boxes of cake mix. So, we're just going to doctor these up, and they'll be wonderful. 
I've got a lot of these in my pantry, so and in my root cellar, I should say. They're in my root cellar, so I want to use them up. This is a perfect time when I'm in a hurry and I'm busy and I got kids. It's a perfect time to utilize convenience. <laughs> I love it. All right, so here we go. I got a video on this on how to make a box case cake taste homemade and i should link it up here in fact i will i'll put it'll be somewhere up here i'll link that these are two different chocolate cakes but they'll work just fine okay Let me throw this out now ultimately you'd want to use butter but i'm not going to use butter because butter is ridiculously expensive right now okay I'm going to use oil, but I'm also going to use, oh, let's see, I want about, because I'm doing two of these, I want about a good, almost a cup of pudding, a, a scant cup of chocolate pudding in here. That pudding makes it nice and moist. Okay. And it calls for three eggs. So I want to get my, you always put an extra egg in. So I'm going to put two extra eggs in. And some of mine are jumbo, some of them are small. See the difference? And look at this baby one yet. We should crack that and see if it's an egg white or all yolk. I'm gonna do eight eggs. Not with the shells though. Ha! This is almost like my big batch brownies. It calls for seven eggs. Okay. Let me put my eggs away. We'll crack that little egg sometime. I'll check it out. That's a gussy, that's a gussy boy size egg. I got an eggshell there. Okay, and then your cup and a half of water. Yeah, it only calls for three quarters a cup of water. Let me make sure. Yep. And your oil. Now, because these are two different cake mixes, um, one calls for three quarter cup of water and the other calls for a cup and a quarter, I might use a little more. And I'm also using hot water because that will help your chocolate bloom beautifully. So you could make a cake like this. Nobody ever know it was out of a box. Perfect. That pudding in there just, oh, it adds, takes it right over the top. Extra eggs in there. I got my oven set to 350. We're going to make this into a half sheet cake because then she'll have extra, or I, when I make her lunches, I'll have extra servings of cake in there for her little TV dinners or her lunch trays. I don't want to call them TV dinners because they're not dinners. They're, well, you could use them for dinners, but these are intended for lunch, and I'm going to need a little more water in here. There we go. That should be good. We got a disaster out in the living room. They're in a biting stage. They want to bite and pinch and scratch, and they bite like dogs. <laughs> my two grand, my youngest grandchildren fight terribly. How do you deal with that? Okay, we'll get this mixed up. I should have used my hand mixer. 
I could use the frosting. I could make the frosting that I make for my big batch brownies because that would be beautiful on this. All right, I think it's mixed up good enough. We're gonna pour this. Right on. I love these. These were a gift in my peel box too, and I think they're beautiful. Okay. And scrape that bowl out, please. I probably got on the front of my apron, but that's all right. Get it to all the edges. Hopefully that don't overflow. All right, the oven is ready. So we are going to put it right in there. Right in the middle of the oven. I think it'll do okay. And it's going to go for about, you know, 25, 30 minutes, just like the box says. See how my potatoes did, friends? They just, they're still nice and firm. And these I put in these bags. I showed you, I did a video on it with all the air holes all over the bag. And they're just now, it's April, and they're just now starting to sprout. I'm pleased with that. And I will definitely grow these again. So I'm going to get these peeled up because I want to do some mashed potatoes. If I have any left over, I'll go ahead and I'll freeze them in servings so that I can just pop them in another, you know, TV dinner tray. So we'll get these. Up. I got some nice sized potatoes in here too. The nice big potatoes. But I'm going to get these peeled up and we'll get these on the stove. The cake is doing good. I was afraid I was afraid that it was going to overflow. <laughs> it looks like it might, but I think it'll be okay. All right. And when I store my potatoes, I don't wash them. Never wash them. Leave them dirty. If you wash them, they'll never last. So now I'll have to buy potatoes from here on out. And that's okay. They're not, you know, ridiculously priced anymore. I do have some that are packaged up and uh, Ziploc bags in the freezer that I can always use too. And my husband likes the little uh, packages that you get that you just add some water to them. But you know, you can doctor those up too. Instead of water, you can use milk and they're wonderful. Put milk and butter and a little bit of parsley in there instead of the water. And you have potatoes that taste like homemade. So... Listen, I'm a pro <laughs> at doctoring up um, convenience foods. When my kids were young, I didn't have a whole lot. So I bought whatever was on sale, whether it was convenience. I did a lot of homemade, but if I found something that was on sale, that was affordable, it was going in my pantry because I didn't have a whole lot. I had to make many, many, many a nights. I had to make dinner out of nothing. And I did it, you know, my kids never went hungry. Thank you, Jesus. But, and that free food that I showed you the other day that I sent to my neighbor, somebody said, uh, uh, left a comment on there and I answered it, you know, not, I don't think she was intending to be rude or anything, but she said, there's no comfort 
uh, food in that box. It's just emergency staples. You can make a lot of meals out of that food. There was beef stew in there. There was canned vegetables in there. You know, um, there was a lot that could meals could be made out of that. There was several meals in that box. I could have made several meals out of what was in that box because I've done that before. And yes, it's pantry staples as well, but there was many meals in that box of food. There was macaroni and cheese. You can make a casserole out of boxed macaroni and cheese. You had everything you needed. You had the milk, you had the vegetables, you had the macaroni and cheese, you know, everything. You could have made a nice casserole. And sometimes, friends, that's all that people have to make a meal out of. I was one of them people when my kids were little, and I could have made a gourmet meal out of that box. If somebody would have brought a box of food like that to my doorstep, oh my goodness, I think I would have fainted. I would have been just elated to get that. And I'd have made many meals out of that. That's why I do that, friends. That's why I do that, because I know there's people out there struggling like I did when my kids were little. And if that box of food, whether people think it's convenience foods or unhealthy or whatever, sometimes that box of food makes a difference of eating a nice, di a nice dinner or going to bed hungry. And I don't know about anybody out there, but I'd rather have that than go to bed hungry. Or your kids go to bed hungry. I'm going to do a couple more of these potatoes, and then I think we're good. Because I know my husband, these fresh mashed potatoes, he'll have a little dish of them for lunch. Even with the chicken casserole, he'll still... And I save these for my... Uh, compost bin. I don't give them to my chickens. You can, but the best way, if you're going to do that, bake them for your chickens because they won't eat them raw. All right. I'm going to get this on the stove and we'll check the cake. That's ready to go. Those are chopped up, rinse chopped up and ready to go. All right. Now, after I get this wiped up, I'm going to sanitize this again. And then we'll, I love the sanitizer. <clears throat> then we'll get that casserole ready for the oven for when the cake is done. Because that cake is only going to be about 20 more minutes. We are going to go ahead and start this. And I'm going to make my homemade cream of chicken soup. This must be a semi-homemade day. Ha! Are they sleeping? Uh-huh. Are you taking a nap, too? You don't let me sleep past noon. Don't let me sleep past noon? Okay. Good night, baby. You got your belly all full of waffles. They had waffles for breakfast. All right. Oh, wrong one. I'm still learning. I'm going to get my flour ready. We're going to need, we use six tablespoons of butter, so we're going to need the same amount of flour. Okay, now I'm going to put in a quarter cup and an eighth of a cup of flour. And we're going to get that flour cooked out. We're going to get that flour taste cooked out of there. So we're going to cook this flour down a little bit. We're going to turn this down just a little bit. And just let that bubble up and cook a little bit. I'm going to open up these jars. Move we'll it back just a hair. Because I'm going to strain these into there. Okay, I think that's right. That's nice. All right. I do just think so.
All right, so now I'm going to put the, this, just done draining, in my bowl. For now, we're also going to put some of our cream in there. Last little bit of it. And we're going to get this thickened up. And this will be beautiful. And it'll thicken as it goes. I'm going to put a little pepper in there. Nice amount of pepper in there. I'm also going to put a little, probably a, probably a teaspoon of garlic in there. There we go. I'm going to check our cake is enormous. <laughs> we want that to bubble up and get thick. And if it's not thick enough, you can add a little cornstarch or a little more flour to it if you choose. Okay, I turned the heat off because that's perfect. See how nice and thick that is? Beautiful. All right, now, I'm gonna get my jars of stuff in here. All my veggies are in here with it. I don't need to add anything. And I might add a little bit. Oh, there's our timer. We gotta check our cake. Okay, friends. Our cake is done. I'm telling you, it's enormous. And I'm gonna go set it. Look how big that thing is. Look at that beautiful cake. Gorgeous, hey? I'm gonna go set it in here to cool. All right, so that's done. We're ready for this. I'm gonna empty this in here. And I love that this is all ready to go. All I gotta do is make the biscuits. And how convenient is that? I got a biscuit mix that all I gotta do is add milk to. Love it. All right, let me set these in the sink. I'm gonna see if I've got a little sour cream because I think I want to add some sour cream to that. Just for the creaminess. We'll put that right in there. That'll mix up well with the... Uh... I'm going to put a little parsley in here. Beautiful. And my favorite, cumin. Oh, I love that stuff. About a good teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to put a little more garlic, just a little more, because I already have some in my homemade soup. And we're going to need some salt and pepper. Okay, and I know I got pepper in my soup. I'm going to put a little more in there. There we go. Beautiful. Now, we're going to just mix this up just a little bit. And then we're going to put our soup in there. And yes, our soup is hot, but it's all right. We'll get it in there. Then we'll whip our biscuits up, and this can go in the oven. Okay? This would make a beautiful dinner, too. I always spray my pans over my sink because I've got wood floors all through my house. And I tell you what, that... If you slide on that, if you get that on your floor, you're going to go sailing. I'm going to look for another bag of frozen veggies. Okay. I got mixed veggies here. That just seems just a little too soupy for me. But I don't want it stiff. I needed more veggies in there.
There we go. That's perfect. Okay. So now, oh, this is going to be a treat. I'm going to pour that right in there. It'll almost be like a chicken gravy with your biscuits. Oh, it will be good. Okay, we got that. This is the fun part. Let's see. I've never made these before. These have been uh, two cups of biscuit milk and two-thirds cup. I'm going to do four cups because I got a big, a big casserole dish there. So we're going to do this. We're going to do four cups. We're going to double it. Nice. And my potatoes just are boiling over. Let me turn that down a little bit. There we go. got that. We need a cup and a third of milk. That's it. I love it. My whole, all my kids, my grandkids and my husband, everybody's sleeping. This is the perfect time to get all my stuff done. Oh, you know what? I need to keep this oven on. 400 this time. I'm supposed to bake this at 400. So we're going to need a cup and a third. So there's one cup and a third. All right, let me put this. Ah, no, I'm going to set that milk aside because you know how I measure. Ha! Actually, I'm going to use my dough hook. I think that'd work better. Okay, and you know what's nice about this is you could put a little bit, we could doctor this up. In fact, I think we will. Watch this. We're going to fix this right up. We're going to make some cheddar biscuits. We're going to put about a cup of cheddar in there. A good handful. Gonna put a little bit of parsley in these just to make them pretty okay now we'll mix this up perfect but it does need more milk okay We got it. Cheddar biscuits on top of it. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> I love it. Okay, they're mixed in good. Okay, so all I'm going to do with these is line the top. Now when the oven is set, we'll put those in the oven. Isn't that beautiful? And look at that. This is semi-homemade, you know. Convenience food and my home canned food. <laughs> what a meal. That that's heavy. But you know what? I'll get I'm gonna give some of these, some of this in her lunch uh, uh, TV dinners. So it'll be perfect. 
when the oven's ready at 400, I'm gonna put it in there. It's gonna bake until those are golden brown. I've never baked them in my oven. So I'm thinking maybe 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. The chicken and everything else is already cooked. And I can put that in there because you see me sanitize my countertop. Um, everything's already cooked, so it's just a matter of heating it through. And if it's not heated completely through, uh, and the, and the uh, biscuits are a little brown, just make a tent with some aluminum foil, put it over it, and it'll keep those biscuits from burning. Our cake is done, our potatoes are cooking. After I get this in the oven and get the potatoes done, then we're gonna do the one pot macaroni and cheese, and I think we're gonna be ready to start putting these little um, TV dinners together. Okay, friends, take a look at how beautiful that turned out. Gorgeous, hey? And I did have to put a uh, little piece of aluminum foil over the top because I didn't want them any browner than what they are here. But that's gorgeous. And that's all done. And we're going to set this over here. Our potatoes are over here, all mashed up. We're just going to leave those on the back of the stove for right now. Because now... We're going to do our macaroni and cheese. Okay. This is real easy. We're going to do two cups. You know what? I'm going to set right up here because that is level. Ha! We're going to do two and a half cups of milk. I'm going to put it right in your pan. This is going to be creamy. And I'm going to use this for my half. All right. We're going to add a half a stick of butter. We're going to turn this on. We're going to turn it on. Not too high, though. Just medium. You want to cook this low and slow because you don't want your milk to curdle. I think it's stuck in there. And uh, you don't want it to stick and burn on the bottom either. But we're putting all this in at one time. We're going to add two cups of the elbow macaroni. Right to everything. Okay. Okay, now we're just going to give this a little stir. Let that all melt down in there. That butter will melt as it cooks. Okay. I'm going to use sharp cheddar. You can use any kind of cheese you want, but I'm going to use sharp cheddar with mine because it it's just has a wonderful flavor. Now, if you use a milder cheese, you can always put a little um, mustard powder in there and it would um, spice it up a little for you. In fact, I'm going to use the sharp cheddar right here. I just pulled it out of my freezer. The sharp cheddar, and I'm also going to use a little Italian. It'll be a good combination. But you keep this mixed. You don't want it burning. I got it turned way down low, so we're just going to let it go. And when this is all ready to put together, I'll bring you back. But remember, low and slow is the key. Okay, friends, see how that's doing? Low and slow. Beautiful. It's going to be some beautiful, creamy one-pot macaroni and cheese. All right, so we're going to put probably a couple cups of this in here. So we want that. Another little, little handful. I'll get that mixed up. And then I'll add the other. And then I'm just going to let it melt. And then I'll mix it all up and it will be divine. Now we got to take a little taste of this. Look at that. Beautiful. Mmm. That's good. Okay, friends. 
the last thing that we are going to do today is our chicken tenders. Okay. And I have got two beautiful breasts here that are nearly unthawed, almost completely unthawed. And we are going to turn these into some beautiful chicken tenders. And I'm using my homemade um, shake and bake. I'm just going to cut them in strips. Okay. And you can do this and you can um, go ahead and bread these and you can always freeze these uncooked too. And that way they're ready to go in the oven. Let me do that one one more time. That way they'll be ready to go into the oven when you want, when you want chicken strips. Or you can bake them completely. It doesn't matter. All right, now. I need, I washed my hands. I need to dry them off. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I got my pan over here. Oh, what you doing, baby? I'm going to put a little olive oil on this. Yeah. I'm going to set my oven to 400. Okay. Okay. And then we are going to dump some of my homemade stuff in there. I don't save this. Once I roll it in there, it's done. I don't use it again. So, and we're going to put these in here. There's a couple of them. A few at a time. And make sure your bag seals. Otherwise, you will have this all over and my bag isn't sealing. Let me get right there. There we go. I think I got that time. Now, I'll just shake these up. This is wonderful stuff. And remember when I made this, I said it would last about three months or so on your shelf. This is almost gone, and it's only been about six weeks on my shelf. So I don't never worry about, you know, having to freeze it or put it in the fridge because it will last up to three months on your shelf. All right. So we've got that. I'm going to turn this light on now. And that would be the one. Watch this. break that off okay. I'm just gonna lay these out just like so last of them. Okay. Seal that bag up. Here it not seal. Okay, now we can shake it. I did that one time and I had it all over my kitchen. That was a nightmare. Shake them really good. All right, that should be good enough. And these are beautiful. And what I don't use in her lunches, 
I'll go ahead and I'll freeze. Even though they're cooked, you can do that too. So I'll freeze what's left for next time for her. And she will love this. Your family will love these. Is Cece awake? All right, so these are going to go into a 400 degree oven for about, hmm, I'm going to guess about 40 minutes. I, I have a thermometer, so when they reach 165, they're done. Okay, friends, so our chicken is in the oven. Our potatoes are done. And if you look behind me, our macaroni and cheese is done. Beautiful. I've got, the cake is done. I just got to frost that. And I've done my frosting on video before, so I'm just going to whip it together off camera. Um, and these two are fighting. What do you do with fighting grandbabies? You give them candy? <laughs> I know what I'd do with my kids if they was fighting, but my grandbabies. Tom, you don't want to fight. You're good babies. You don't want to fight. Can you hug each other? Can you give Gussie Boy a hug? No? Oh, give us Gussie Boy a hug for Nana. Please. Please. You're going to give me a hug? Oh, you give me a hug? Mm, I love you so much. Gussie, picking on you? All right. The cake is done and cooled. The casserole's done. So when the chicken's done, we'll be ready to put all this together. And then I can take these babies outside and have fun. Oh, uh, what? Oops. Cheetos? Yeah. Grandkids are here. Cheetos on the floor. Race cars in the bathtub. <laughs> I love it. All right. We are ready to put these together. And I know I'm going to have a load of leftovers because that's just how I am, you know, but that's all right. That will go in the freezer too. And we've got eight of them. And this one looks like it didn't do too well in the microwave. But, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is because I got this big, beautiful bag of, yeah, this big, beautiful bag. Actually, I'm going to do this. Here. I'm going to put the veggies in about four of them. I got that at Costco. Big old bag of vegetable blend. It's perfect for this. Okay. Them are frozen. I'm not cooking them. They're just going to be, they're going to stay just the way they are. And I'll see. These are good size in here, so... got broccoli in that one. I'm going to have to pull them out with my fingers, but my hands are clean. That didn't go in there. It goes in there. Oh, well, I'll need some match. Woo! Give her a carrot. How do you like that? It works. filming baby okay. they come rushing in the house um what 10 minutes ago yeah. there's baby bunnies there's baby bunnies there's three baby bunnies we got in addition to the farm hi friends i said oh don't touch them whatever you do let's do one more here since we got a lot of these that's my dad yeah go right ahead All right, that's good for those four for right now. All right, so let's see. Actually, I could probably just do the four. This pan is not hot anymore, so we're going to do. Let me set 
this right here. And we're going to do three of these because that makes a nice meal. These are beautiful. Okay. Should I do... Yeah, I need to do four of them. So we'll probably use all these. What are you doing with hiding? Oh, and I got fried chicken too, but you know what? I should have... Um, I'll do the fried chicken next time. I'm going to do these this time around. Let's break that off. And we'll save that for Papa. Oh, it's stuck on my... Ah, stuck on my apron. Papa, you want this piece of... Uh, Chicken? Okay. You're coming. Right here, that's alright. Want that little piece of chicken? Tell them how it tastes. Okay, so now we're going to do. Bye. Papa, I'll see baby bunnies outside. Baby bunnies outside, huh? Yeah. I'll just not touch them. You not touch them? Are they just babies? Yeah. Help Nana make healthies, okay, Marlo? I love you. I love you too. You're so sweet. I'll be able to freeze those. Okay, so now I'm going to put macaroni and cheese in this one. All right, that looks good. Um, this is a toy for outside. We're going to do a little macaroni and cheese in these. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can chase it. And even though we're putting the biscuits and the chicken, chicken and biscuits, we're still going to do a little mac and cheese in that one. All right, so we've got four of those. These are nice. And we are going to do the chicken and biscuits. There's one. These are beautiful. Now see this one, when I'm all done, what's left over, I can freeze. Absolutely. I'm gonna put a piece of cake in these three. So she's, cause she's got vegetables in here. In fact, I should take that out and put a piece of cake in those. And I think I will. We'll put these, my hands are clean. So we'll just stick this back in here because she's got veggies. I got veggies in the um, chicken and biscuits so we'll do a piece of cake in each one of those and our big enormous cake so hopefully this won't be too big it'll fit perfect There we go. That cake will freeze really well. That turned out lovely. Okay. Voila! They're done. All eight of them. So she's got eight for now, and I've got a lot left over here. I can freeze this. And, uh, I'll freeze it in smaller containers and I'll also freeze what's left of the macaroni and cheese and the mashed potatoes so that they are ready to go for another round of dinners. 
Okay, so I can put all my lids on and get these red. These are going to go in the freezer right away. Look at that, that cake fits in there beautiful. It doesn't smash it down. I love that. This one might a little bit. Perfect. Look at those. This is a perfect way. And you know what? You have to do this for lunch. This would make a wonderful dinner for individual meals as well. You can do this and put it all in your freezer. And if you've got a neighbor who needs a little extra food or is sick and needs a meal, there you go. You can even share them. But that's how nice these turn out. I would have made more. Oops. What was on there? I would have made more, but I don't have any more containers right now. So this will work just fine. Okay. And it's semi-homemade. Most of it's homemade. There's a few things the vegetables were already froze, already taken care of. The cake was semi-homemade, but you know what? This is a good homemade meal. And these are perfect lunches to put in your freezer or dinners. And it's healthy. So there you have it, friends. I hope you enjoyed this day we had in the kitchen. I've got to take care of this stuff get it in the freezer. I've got to get my little bit of mess cleaned up because I clean as I go so I don't have too much and take a look at this. Ha! Ah, I gotta show you this. My grandkids collected eggs. I've been getting this many eggs every day and it's about four dozen. So I'm excited about that too. So I'm to clean my eggs up Get all this taken care of, and I'm going to go outside and start working on my garden beds to plant my potatoes. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen. I hope this all helps. I will list the, the um, recipe for the chicken and, and biscuits in the, uh, and the macaroni and cheese in the description box. You already, I already have a video I will link to um, the homemade shake and bake. I've got a video with that already. I'll link it up in somewhere or down in the description box. I'll link it. So you all have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow because we got 200 pounds of beef coming and we have got 30 pounds of potatoes to plant. We got carrots to plant and onions to plant. So you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.